Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wealth in Christ Podcast, the show where we inspire the masses to become financially free while building God's kingdom. On the podcast today, we have Mr. Alex Miranda. I hope I said that right. Yes, sir. Mr. Alex Miranda is a serial entrepreneur and is well known for being the founder of Daily Godpreneur. Aside from being a founder of Daily Godpreneur, Mr. Alex is the author of multiple Bible plans on the Bible app, encouraging Christian entrepreneurs on how they can scale their business to the next level through Christ. In this podcast, we're going to discuss how Mr. Alex uses multiple platforms to encourage and equip Christian entrepreneurs with information to grow their business. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the work that you're doing for the kingdom and for the marketplace. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So what led you to becoming an entrepreneur? Let's start from there. Yeah. Um, I think entrepreneurship for me, it was, I was born with it. I think from, from when I saw my grandmother selling and hustling flowers um, to just seeing her, you know, own her own business. I thought to myself, I can sell too. And so when, when I was a kid, I had a um, car wash business. When I was in middle school and, and high school, I sold candy. Um, I was always selling, hustling, trying to make my own money. Yeah, I had a couple jobs in between. And I, I think that those were cool for showing me, you know, discipline and, and, and a work environment. But I always knew that the, the normal nine to five thing wasn't for me because I was, I was born to create. That, that, that's really that's really dope that's really little you kind of remind when i used to sell candy in high school myself um and I, yeah this is just interesting to see how we can relate in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what led you to creating um daily godpreneur what led you to creating that page that business yeah that's a good question and you know it didn't even start off as a business bro it started off as so you know how they say you should read the Bible and you should journal, right? It's kind of like a, like a thing that you should be doing as a Christian. Um, shouldn't just be reading and then moving on with your day. Journaling helps us kind of remember the things more, right? So um, I became a Christian and I was just going to church. And then you evolve into reading some, reading the Bible or sorry, participating in, in growth groups. I'm, I'm giving the sort of the born again Christian kind of typical roadmap. You, you start going to church like once in a while and then once a month and then once a week, you know, you, and then they, they get you to volunteer and then they get you into a growth group, right? It's how they sort of level you up. And then eventually you, you start reading the Bible on your own. And yeah. this, I'm talking years this is my, my progress over the years. Um, and then in 2014, um, I had just hit rock bottom in a lot of parts of my business. I, I was a nightclub promoter and my business, my branding agency was, was for the nightlife. I did nightclub bars, lounges. I did their logos, their websites, their graphic designs while at the same time becoming a Christian. So imagine you're this big nightclub promoter, then you find Christ. And then there's this sort of time period where you're both, right? You're, and then eventually you get so convicted from being in the nightlife that you, you eventually start shedding that off. The problem was everything in my business was nightlife. Like all the money I made, all everything, my employees, my marketing, my book on Amazon, my, I had a membership site called Nightlife Marketers Association. <laughs> I was at the nightclub and bar convention with my booth every year. Um, so 2014 hits and it's the peak of my conviction of like, all right, Alex, like, are you going to really be a follower of Christ? Or are you going to try to live both lives kind of justifying the means to the end? Like you got to make money, right? Um, yeah. So um, I decided to go cold turkey and cut off the nightlife, like literally one day to the next. And I, I fired all my employees. 
fired my clients. And so think about it from one day to the next, all this money, all of a sudden stops coming into my life. And so now I'm thinking, you know, God's going to show up like right away. Like the next day I'm going to get a big client. That's, that's not how it works though. Um, <laughs> God didn't just show up immediately the next day. And, uh, and I, I think it was a testing period for me. I think it was a very, it was a big, big time for me to, to, to really show God my faith. And so what I did was I, I went to the word um, and got deeper in it. And, um, and then one day I'm reading the Bible and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a message for entrepreneurs. Like it didn't say business owners or entrepreneurs, right? Not in the Bible, but I, I interpret it as, as that because I was going through something in my life and the word spoke to me and came alive to me as an, as an entrepreneurial message. So I, I took that and I blogged about it on my blog, which was just my blog, alexmiranda22.com. It was just normal, normal blog and just jotting down my ideas, you know, whatever the Bible was telling me, I'm jotting it down on my blog. Not for any kind of audience, bro. Just an audience of really just myself, like as a place to just write stuff down. And eventually, like that after a few days, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I could literally read the whole Bible from the point of view of an entrepreneur and then interpret it to entrepreneurs. So the Bible verse will say this, but this is how you can interpret it as an entrepreneur, right? And I thought, you know what? I could spend the rest of my life doing this. Like, I really, really love doing that. Uh, I call it the Godpreneur method, where you, you sort of read the verse, apply it to your business, and then you teach it out. Um, that's on, on, on you version. I have an, uh, a Bible app um, called uh, Christian Entrepreneur's Guide to Business Growth. And that's what I teach. And that started my journey of, of blogging. Eventually I said, okay, these, these can live on their own brand. And that's what I do. I'm, I'm a branding agency. So I thought, let me launch a blog. And what, what am I? Well, I'm an entrepreneur that puts God first. So I'm a Godpreneur. And that's how, and then I blog daily. And I, I'm not just a Godpreneur on Sundays. I'm a Godpreneur every day. So daily Godpreneur was my commitment to myself to be a Christian entrepreneur in the marketplace. Also a commitment that I was going to be in the word daily uh, because daily we're going through stuff in our business, right? So daily we need God's word in our, in our lives. Um, so that's the, that's the story, bro. <laughs> Wow, that, that's very, that's very inspiring, very inspiring. I have a lot of questions to ask in regards to that. Um, so my first question is, I guess it's like a, you started as a nightlife and you was, you know, building up in your faith. You know, what was the process like to just say, yeah, I'm just not doing this? Because oftentimes, you know, as a Christian, you know, as a Christian entrepreneur, it's like, you know, you want to make money, but, you know, the world is not, you know, the safe place for, you know, people who love Christ, you know, who want to promote. So how did you be able to find peace with that? I think a big concept here that people need to know is let conviction do what conviction is supposed to do. Mm. See, a lot of us are trying to quit something, you know, stop doing this. If we would just focus on becoming like Christ, the natural outflow of that is conviction, sanctification. Um, these are things that by virtue of going to Christ daily, I will naturally feel convicted and naturally shed off the things that are not like Christ. And so if someone is struggling 
with a business that they know they shouldn't be in anymore. In my case, it was the nightlife. I think there could be other, other industries and businesses that people struggle that they're in that they know doesn't honor Christ. They know that that's just not the way. They don't have to feel stressed or worried about that. What they should be focused on, the energy of your, your Holy Spirit should be focused on becoming more like the person of Christ and, and naturally um, that, they, that, that will, the things, you, the sin will shed itself off. And we don't have to worry about the time or the place of it. it it's going to happen. There are some people that, um, I mean, at some point, the conviction is so hard that you need to pull the trigger and, 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 and simply let something go, right? You don't, have the, you don't have the power to pull the trigger. Christ is the power to pull that trigger that's going to let you shed off that thing. We do not have that power. That power comes from the Holy Spirit, which, came, which is empowered by our relationship with Christ. Wow. Uh, that, yes, you're 100% right. Yeah. It's not that we need less nightlife in our life. It's that we need more Christ in our life. Mm. People are focused on the things that they shouldn't be doing anymore instead of focus on the thing, the thing that the Holy Spirit wants them to do. The Holy Spirit only wants us to draw closer to God. That's it. Everything else we have to trust that the natural progression of that is the shedding off of sin. Duh. It's, it's, it's logic. There won't be any space for it if you're, if you're so focused on becoming like Christ. Don't you already know that you're naturally going to shed those other things off? Wow. That, that, that's great. That's great. That's definitely great. Um, that's really great. Wow. Uh, so you, you spoke about, you know, a, a certain message or a certain scripture in the Bible stood out to you that led you to blogging. Could, would you mind sharing that? Jeremiah scripture? 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you. And here's, here's why that one was so strong for me. I own a branding agency. When I, when I do branding, it's because someone wants to launch a business, right? So yeah. I'm like the first person they call like, Hey, I just got a message from my friend, George. He wants to launch a business selling sports memorabilia, whatever. I get a, I get a Facebook message asking me like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. So I'm like the first person people call when they even think of an idea. Okay. What does that, that puts me in a very important position. I get to. I get to dictate, guide someone down a path. Now, before my relationship with God, I would, my, my response would be, all right, cool. Let's meet. Um, my packages are $10,000 and you get a logo, a website, blah, 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 blah. Like I would just go straight for the sale, right? Because that's what he's, he's asking me for that. So I'm just going to tell him. Like, all right, cool. And I'm going to take his deposit and I'm going to give him what he wants. That was before Christ, before reading up on, for I know the plans I have for you. So I took my concept of like, I'm helping someone with their plan, right? With their business plan. But if the Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you, then am I the one coming up with the plan or am I the one? interpreting God's plan for him mm. regardless of whether he's Christian or not I have a duty and responsibility to let him know that that business he wants to launch it's either part of God's plan or not so why don't we first determine is this part of God's plan for you and then move forward. Wouldn't that be logical? So yeah. wouldn't it be logical if I asked you, George, um, I'm speaking example-wise, George, 
do you think you're born to sell sports memorabilia? And if George's response is, Alex, you know what? Ever since I was a child and that I, I, I loved it and my dad would always give me and my dad collected it and my grandpa and I have the, uh, but, but I'm, and he's telling me all this stuff from his past and how much it means to him and how much I'm like, dude, sports memorabilia is your thing, bro. Like, yes, let's do this. But if, but if George tells me, well, know i saw a youtube video of a guy that's making a million dollars selling sports memorabilia and blah 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 plus i have a friend of mine that can counterfeit um you know signatures i'm gonna be like yo george dude what are we talking about here like you have no business being in sports memorabilia it's not part of your plan bro so so you want to start a business then let's talk about starting a business but let's start with a clean slate here let me help you discover what to Jeremiah 29 11 means for you. So my branding agency completely changed. Whereas I used to just take people at their word. You want to launch a business, bro? Okay, cool. Here's how much it is. Here's the deposit. Boom, boom, boom. But now I can't just let people launch a business. I got to first determine, is this what the Lord wants for you? Christian or not, all of them let me take them through their process because I'm like, you got to launch a business that you're born to do. If you're not, you're going to quit. You're not going to have the motivation. You're not going to have the, the gasoline that you need to get through the lows of business ownership. Just because you're doing what you're born to do doesn't mean it's easy. In fact, it's going to be harder because the enemy is going to stop you at every corner because the business you're supposed to do is going to glorify the Lord. So you need, you really need to be in your calling if you're going to be in entrepreneurship. And well, Alex, what about all the non-Christians who are, who are making millions of dollars in their business? Well, they're in their calling. They are. You can be in your calling and not glorify God. You can. That's called grace. <laughs> it's grace is for everyone. That grace isn't just for Christians. Grace is for non-Christians too. Hopefully one day that business owner will come to a realization that all along he's been doing his calling and eventually give credit to where credit is due. But, but maybe not today. So, but, but stop worrying about him and his calling and all the money he's making. And you start worrying about your calling. And the Lord will deal with him when he wants to deal with him. Wow. That, 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 that's, that's good. That, that's good. Because oftentimes, you know, as Christian, also like in my journey as starting as an entrepreneur, it's almost like, there's always, always a comparison, you know, what this unbeliever is doing versus a Christian. Um, and the way you explain it, you know, we all, everybody's doing it calling. It's just a matter of fact, if one, if we are given that glory back to God. Wow, that's, that's really great. And being that say, do you think, you know, all Christians should be on this journey of entrepreneurship or is, for, is destined? No. To, is, no, everybody should be on a journey of calling. And if your calling leads you, you so, so everybody's primary calling is to spread the gospel. That's already said and done. Okay. Every one of us. Now that's called your primary calling, your secondary calling, which is an offshoot off your primary calling is your vocation. Your vocation should be a light to your first calling. So some way, somehow your vocation, whether it's entrepreneurship, because entrepreneurship is a vocation, business ownership, business ownership is a, is a vocation. But notice how I'm separating entrepreneurship and business ownership. They are not the same. Um, then there's uh, nine to five. Uh, so you're, you're a working, you're a working person. You work for a business owner. Okay. Then there's volunteerism and all of that other stuff. Okay. 
you, you're either an entrepreneur, so you create businesses and put people in place to run the business so you can go and keep creating. You're a creator. You're working with God to solve problems in the world and you have a brain to solve problems and put people to work to solve that problem. That's entrepreneurship. Now, if you, if you do that, plus you give yourself a job within that business, you are no longer an entrepreneur, you are a business owner. So you, you, you started the business, you took the risk of starting a, a business and solving a problem, that's entrepreneurship. However, you, 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 you're not going to do that again because you're in business ownership mode now. So you're, you're an employee of your own business. So you're not out there again, doing that again in another industry or another business. You're, you're now you're a business owner. And then you have employees that work for you. That means that you, we're either going to be cut from the cloth of entrepreneurship business ownership or working for a business owner or volunteering somehow, you know, and you get your money through donations or whatever it is. So know this, that you're not, everyone is supposed to be an entrepreneur. However, the working class person can be the light of Christ in their job and support someone else's calling of business ownership or entrepreneurship. And that's still part of the, the, the God's plan for, for, for this world. So God's plan was either you were going to be someone who creates, someone who manages, or someone who works. It's just the way it is. That's where we all are. Yeah, you're 100% right. You know, I, the first time I heard that was from a guy named Myron Golden. And he kind of broke it down like the exact way you're breaking down um, in that regard. So uh, this is a question I want to ask. And also, you know, um, so in 1 Timothy 6.10, you know, this is a scripture that a lot of people misquote. Um, it's saying, you know, for the love of money is a, is, is a root of all evil. Um, oftentimes people take that scripture out of context in terms of like, you know, God doesn't like you, God doesn't want you to be wealthy. And if you are wealthy, you know, it's almost like a sin, um, if that makes sense. So how do you go about, you know, teaching entrepreneurs in terms of one, how to view money and how to go about managing money so they won't fall, like, you know, in context to that. To that I think it's important to understand the whole verse for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Yeah. It, if we look at this, some people eager for money mm -hmm. have wandered from the faith. He's talking about people who are faithful. Okay. They were faithful followers. But they became eager for money instead of eager for the Lord. Their eagerness changed. And the eagerness caused them to wonder. Money didn't cause them to wonder. Because even in faith, they were probably making money somehow. So the money didn't cause them to become evil. The eagerness changed the desire of the heart changed they desired money more than god therefore they wandered from the faith and they pierced themselves with many griefs the love of money is the problem money is not the problem money is not the problem the love of the money is what brings about all kinds of evil so we just need to make sure we love God. This is why this poster back here says, God first. Money follows. What money follows. Like followers 
to have followers doesn't hurt me. Like if I got five people behind me following me, like that's no effort on my end. They're following me. Like I didn't tell them to follow me. They're just following me. Like I'm focused forward. It takes no energy of mine for those five people to follow me, right? If you're running a triathlon and five people are following you, it doesn't take you any more energy. They're following you. God first. Money follows. Opportunity follows. <laughs> Contracts follow. Yeah, you don't have to work for it. 100% of our effort should be focused on 100% of God. I'm not talking about uh, isolating yourself as a monk and going into the mountains and, 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 and reclusive, uh, you know, that's not what I'm saying. This podcast right now that I'm on is 100% of God. This is God first. This is just me putting God first, bro. We're on a podcast. I'm using, you know, technology and we're using lights and electricity, but I'm on, I'm on a podcast. You know what could happen from this podcast? Someone could hear it. Someone could say, oh, I like that dude. Well, that's what's up. I want to buy one of those posters. All right, go to faithhustle.co, buy one. I'm going to make money from that. Money follows, bro. Oh, I like this dude. I'm going to follow him on Daily Godpreneur. Cool. And then I'm going to buy one of his courses on Godpreneur Academy. Money follows, bro. Oh, I like this dude. You know what? He's got a branding agency. I'm going to holler at him for, for, for a logo and website. Cool, man. My God first being here on this podcast, money followed. Do you understand how it works, man? Yeah. It's just the way it has to go. People look at this poster and they think, bro, this guy has money on his mind all day long. But the look at the poster next to it. Can you read those or are they backwards for you? They're backwards for me. Well, this one says, Jesus takes the credit. I take the cash. It's the same concept, man. As long as I give credit to Jesus in everything that I do, Jesus doesn't take cash. Like, what's, what's he going to, like, no, cash comes to me. Like, it goes into my bank account. Cash is a thing here in the world. Yeah. Like, that's, so what, what's the same concept? God first, money follows. People, people may misinterpret that. And they don't, they don't have the full concept or whatever. But I'm, I'm always referring back to 1 Timothy 6.10. Is that this right here, these two messages right behind me all the time, help me stay focused. Not on the money. But on God. But on my commitment to the Lord. Both of those statements together keep me at north. Because here's what happens. Is that when money does start coming in. And when when it does get more and more and more, our eagerness for more starts to shift. And even the best Christians, even myself, can get caught up in eagerness for money. And, and that, that's why I think that the wealthier you get, the stronger you become in the, you, you have to, you have to become stronger in the Lord because the bigger the pool is from the enemy who wants to shift your eagerness over to money. Wow. 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 That's good. That's a, that's a great explanation. So being that said, you know, what do you, what would you say are some challenges, you know, you had to overcome um, to get to where you are right now? I think one of the biggest challenges I have, and I still have to overcome, is understanding that God doesn't need us to save the world. Mm. God doesn't need us to work with every single person on the planet. But our eagerness for money... <laughs> leads us to want to do that so what happens is we launch very generic businesses remember i told you at the beginning um i i was in the nightlife industry 
Yeah. Well, that was actually a really good thing for entrepreneurship. You want to pick one industry and one type of client to service because you can make a lot of money you, because you're just servicing one type of client. So I already know what a nightclub's website needed to have, how the nightclub flyers should look like. I know what, what, what conferences I should go to, what are the top 100 clubs in the world that I should be knocking at the door at trying to get a, a retainer, right? All my employees, I could train them in nightlife graphic design. I could start the nightlife marketing association and really service one type of client and like really do it well. I served the nightlife world to the maximum power. I was just so focused on serving them and giving them what they needed. The problem is most business owners though, we don't do that. Instead, we'll launch a branding or marketing agency for anyone. Come one, come all. The more, the merrier. And what happens is that's a very selfish approach. That's eagerness for money. Yeah. And, and so when I tell clients and entrepreneurs, I'm like, all right, who do you serve? What's the one client you serve? Realtors are the worst at it. They go, well, I can sell real estate in the entire state of Florida. Okay, so can 100,000 other realtors licensed in Florida. Like, who are you here to serve? Well, you know, everybody in Miami-Dade who has a mansion. Okay, don't you think every realtor wants to do that? Like, come on, what's up? Who are you here to serve? Well, you know... I, I don't know. I don't know who. Okay. How about you help first time home buyers? So people who are in who bought their first home, but they outgrew their, their house, right? Because they had a family. You help first time home buyers buy their second home, sell their first one to buy their second one. Mm -hmm. And the realtor looks at me and says, why would I do that? What about all the other people who want to buy a home? And I go, you're not, you're not understanding what I'm trying to tell you. you. You need to serve one type of client and you need to do it with excellence. And you can't do that if one day you're selling a mansion and the next day you're selling a, a, a house in the hood. And then the next day you're showing an apartment, like you're going to kill yourself and no, and your clients are not going to be working with a specialist. They're going to be working with a generalist. You wouldn't go get your teeth done from a heart surgeon. Yeah. Both of them are doctors. Just one of them is for the heart and one of them is for your teeth. Both of them went to medical school. So my point is the hardest thing that entrepreneurs will do will be putting on horse blinders to only service one client. And then the Lord opens up depth. The oil, oil is down, right? You got to drill for oil down. Mm -hmm. Then you get into a pool of oil and then you can make a bunch of money. Yeah. But you got, you got entrepreneurs, they're not drilling down, they're drilling sideways. Wow. I want to work with this type of client, this type of client, this type. So I have a, a, a branding agency called Educational Brands. I only service charter schools. We only do branding for charter schools. Well, Alex, what about Christian private schools? I, I don't feel I'm not there yet. I don't, I don't want to do Christian private schools right now. I just want to do charter schools. Well, what about universities? I university is a whole nother freaking planet. I don't want to do universities right now. I just want to do charter schools because charter schools in and of itself, they have their own things that you need to understand and get fully immersed in to really be able to serve. What we're talking about is serve. Jesus calls us to serve. You can't be the best servant 
if you don't know what you're, you're, who you're serving so well that you can predict what they need before they even know. The hardest thing entrepreneurs will go through will be to understand that they only serve one client. And then the Lord opens it up later, later, not today. That's, that's, that's great, yeah. That's great. That's great. That's very true. That's one of the hardest things, you know, as entrepreneurs to stay focused on that one task. Like one, us. one client. The secret is this. Um, and I tell it to the realtors and any business owner. I'm like, you've probably already served this client before this type of client. You just don't, you don't realize that that's the client God wants you to work with that type of client. So why don't we explore which what home experience, home selling experience did you have that was the best one ever? You, you made a bunch of money. They were such a breeze to work with. You really helped them out. They sent you freaking Christmas cards. You know, they love you. Because not every client experience is like that. Yeah. So which one was like the golden child one? The one you wish all clients were. Well, there was this one time that I helped this family sell their home to get into their other home, but it was really tricky because you have to be able to sell one home and the next day they move into the next home without them having to move into their parents' house for a month because something got messed up with the contract. Oh, okay. So it's a very tricky transaction to sell your home and move into the next one. It's very tricky. If something goes wrong with one of those two deals, they could be out of a home or out of money or whatever. Yeah. So then I go, why don't you just do that then? Why don't you focus on that only? That way you, you only need to, let's say you only need to market to townhomes because townhomes and apartments are typically starter homes, right? Yeah. So you, you start your family, you move in with your wife, then you have a kid and then you have your second kid and you're like, holy crap, this place doesn't fit us anymore. So guess what? All of your marketing can be pointed at apartments and townhomes, like small single family homes. And your marketing comes in a postcard in the mail and it says, it has like a crowded room, you know, with like a baby on top of another baby with, you know, there, uh, are you ready to move out of your home and, and get into your dream home? Call me. I specialize in selling your home to getting into your dream home. Come on, dog. Who's not gonna, who's not gonna relate to this postcard? Instead, oh. instead, we send generic, you know, oh, I'm I'm this and I can sell your home. Woohoo! You speak to my problem, bro. I got a problem. My problem is my house is too darn small and, 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 and I'm, and I'm pregnant and I have another kid coming. So it's time to go. Wow. wow. Well, that, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty great. That's pretty great. But, but, um, I, I, but I came to that conclusion because I asked the person, what was your favorite home that you ever sold your favorite client experience? And he told me that that was his favorite one. So then I told him, that's your brand, stick to it, live there, make a whole frigging company around that alone. Selling your first home to get into your dream home. Bro, that's a tagline. Yeah. That's a slogan. That's, 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 a slogan. that's a specialist. So if you have a home, bro, with your wife and you're looking to get out and your best friend sells homes, but then this other dude who does this for a living? I mean, this is what he freaking does. Who are you gonna give the business to? Your best friend? Or the homie that says this is what he does all day, every day? I don't know, maybe you're Mr. Nice Guy and you'll 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 give it to your, your best friend and, and, and risk it all. No, I'm, I'm gonna give it to the specialist. I think so, bro. I think so. That's how decisions are made, man. Their decisions are made on who knows my problem, who understands me, 
who knows me, who knows what keeps me up at night. That's how people make decisions. Wow, that's great. That's that's one hundred percent. Thank you for that breakdown um, of how to niche down in your business as an entrepreneur. Um, so I want to quickly talk about you know Godpreneur and what you know as Christian you know they can expect from the website you know the blog you know and your other businesses that you offer to specifically to Christians. Yeah, Daily Godpreneur is a blog where you can understand the business, the wisdom, the business wisdom that the Bible has. And it's not your typical blog of, uh, it's, it's not your typical blog. It's a blog of people like me sharing their experience through the word of God. So let's say I have a really terrible client experience. I'll I'll share it, but I, I'll share it as how did the Lord take me through that? How did, what Bible verse can I lean on? And so the way the blog is written and presented is that um, I first share an experience, like some traumatic event that I went through in my entrepreneurial life, you know, some employee that left me or whatever, some client that's not paying on time. Right. And then I'll, but I'll go to the word first and I'll be like, okay, what does the word have to say about this? Like, what do you, Lord, what are you trying to have me do here? Are you trying to like, cause I'm, I really need this money, right? I, I really need this client to pay. And I'm about to put a lawsuit on him. I'm about to send letters. I'm about to, you know, put a social media post, like, right? But the, but the Lord would not want any of that. And so you, you go to the word and then the word feeds you. And it's like, oh, okay, all right. So this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be patient. I'm supposed to show grace. In fact, I'm supposed to serve him, continue to serve that person who owes me money. I know, sounds crazy. Unless the Lord wants you out of that toxic relationship, right? That's a whole nother blog post. But the, the, the Lord will guide you out of a certain situation. Well, on Daily Godpreneur, we share a lot of what situation you're in and what the Lord has to say about it and how to get through it. That's kind of how Daily Godpreneur works. It's like, it's very topical. Like what topic of business are you struggling in right now? And let's help, let's solve that through someone sharing their testimony, someone sharing their story of how they made it through with the Lord. So it's, um, it's a lot of stuff you find on entrepreneur.com or Forbes.com. It's just, once again, they don't give credit to where credit is due. Whereas on our blog, everything has a Bible verse. So everything gives credit to, to where credit is due. Similar blog posts you'll find on Forbes or Entrepreneur or Inc. You'll find them on our blog. But our blog the, the, gives, gives credit to where credit is due. Oh, that's that's dope. That's definitely dope. Um, so that leads to my next question. You know, you've been talking about your faith, but I want to know, like, personally, how has your faith, you know, has guided you, you know, from transition from the nightlife to now, you know, you're helping other Christians, you know, you're getting different clients, you're managing, you know, multiple business. How has your faith kept you through this whole process? So I'm going to get scientific for a second here. No problem. We, we only have the ability to understand what's right in front of us right here, right now. Like this moment that I'm in with you right now is all I can process. I don't know what's happening at the gas station on the corner right now, right? Because I'm not there. Yeah. Right? I don't know what my wife is doing at home with our kids right now. I'm not there. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have the Lord in my life, I might worry about those things, mm -hmm. which would rob me of my time with you right now, which is 
the only place the Lord wants me and the only place that the Holy Spirit can act is right here, right now. The Holy Spirit can't act in the future and the Holy Spirit can't act in the past. The only the Holy Spirit can do what he's doing right here, right now, in this moment. Faith, having a strong spiritual connection allows me to operate in the most efficient way right here, right now, because I can't process everything in my life that's happening at every moment. So I need a faithful background in order to not worry about the things around me, one. Two, when I am presented with something, faith helps me make a decision on that thing more quickly than not. For, for example, client calls me or prospect. Yeah, I need a website, you know, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. Okay, yeah, sounds great. If I wouldn't have the Holy Spirit within me nudging me towards it, or away from it, then I'm missing out on a layer of decision making that I no longer have to make. Mm. When you reached out to me for a podcast, I didn't hesitate. The Holy Spirit told me I need to do this. Do you see how my faith makes decision making uh, like I didn't have to toil over it, bro. I didn't have to like, well, okay, let me ask my wife, you know, let me pray about it. Let me think, let me, well, is this going to be good for me? Am I going to get 10,000 followers from it? I don't got to think about those things because my faith has, has, has given me a certain amount of knowledge and wisdom that I can move forward in my life more efficiently because I have certain ethics and morals and certain things that are already decided for me. The Bible already decided that. I don't need to think about it. The less things that I, you see this black shirt right here? Yeah. I have 30 black shirts, one for every day of the week. Wow. Why, do you, why do you think I do that? There's no thought process to you because you're going to wear the same shirt every day. I don't got to think about it. Yeah. I just don't have to think about it. I don't got to worry about it. It's not. Why? Because the Lord doesn't want me thinking about my shirt. The Lord wants me thinking about who I need to serve next. That's all. That's it. It's really that simple. So faith, faith, Christianity is people like people are so into the religion of it like stop being caught up in the religion of it Under, understand that the book is there to make our life easier <laughs> everything is set up to make our life easier to make this place a heaven on earth why you got to make it more difficult for yourself it doesn't have to be that hard just follow the rules and and well, but it's very restricting. The rules are, are you kidding me? I have more freedom than I've ever felt in my life. Wow. There's no way you're going to convince me that I have more freedom away from Christianity. Because I went in deep into one thing. It's that message that I said earlier about picking one brand, or picking yeah. one type. It's the same thing. When you pick one spiritual way to follow, you go deep into that, eventually you hit a reservoir of oil that you can feed off of for the rest of your life. You could just live there. It's about efficiency, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, I'm not trying to say that spirituality is about efficiency. I, I'm just bringing up, I'm answering your question. How, how has, how, how, did, how has faith helped you in your in your entrepreneurial walk 
It's helped me be more efficient so that I can create more businesses. Because I, I just, I operate under a set of rules that help me operate more efficiently and make decisions faster. Well, that, no, that, that, that's pretty dope. That, that is, no, that is really pretty dope. That is really pretty dope. So where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? You know, I think eventually I see myself like a Tony Robbins type of guy, except for, for Christian entrepreneurs, like for that world. Um, I, I see myself motivating, teaching. I see myself bringing up more Godpreneurs, like more Christian uh, entrepreneurs who want to guide other Christian entrepreneurs. Like I see myself creating more people like me that are just out there in the world um, trying to impact the marketplace for the word. Um, I see myself inspiring more people to do that and, and um, yeah and, and then that, and then they'll go off and inspire the world in whatever marketplace or industry that they're in oh, that's pretty that's pretty dope that's pretty dope now, I as, for, as for what businesses I have no idea bro because wow. because I'll get a business idea and, and three months later I'm launching it. And I'm, so it's like, I don't know who I'm going to meet tomorrow. I don't know what the Lord is going to bring in front of me tomorrow, but I've set my whole life up to be able to press play on that new business idea in a very quick, efficient manner, because I've learned the art of setting up a business, not running a business. That's what entrepreneurship is. You, the, the art of setting it all up and putting people to work. Like, think about this. Start a business where your first employee is the president. Think about yeah. that. Your first employee is the owner, the president, the COO, the CEO. Like, that's how I start my businesses now. Like, who's going to run this thing? Because it ain't going to be me. Because if I'm running it, then I can't operate. Then I can't start another business that the Lord is asking me to start. Plus, I'm robbing someone else of being in their calling and, and, and them making money. The Lord wants to use, you, you know, he wants money to flow through you. He doesn't want you to hoard money. Mm. So you want more money. You figure out how to be a bigger flow of it. How are you going to be a flow if you ain't hiring people? What, what, you, what you flowing to? Are you flowing to the Porsche dealership? Is that where you're flowing to? Okay. That's cool too. I mean, at, at some point you should reward yourself with, with something nice. That's cool. But I think those things come to the people who are such a big flow to more people that they have an overflow you take overflow and you go get yourself a porsche yeah if that's what you want right if that's what you you you've desired like okay cool i'm not gonna knock you for it but when you're taking the money and giving yourself the porsche and uh, but you're not flowing some your luck might want run out one day Hopefully not, right? Hopefully the Lord shows you grace until the day you die. Yeah. Yes. Who knows? Nah, nah. Nah, I definitely want to say thank you for your time. You know, this was one, it was a fun interview. Um, definitely learned a lot that I'm definitely going to um, reflect. Um, I'd like you to leave us with a word of wisdom and where people can find you um, to stay in touch with you. I would say um, my, my word of wisdom that's coming out, which was right at the beginning, was is just it, it's, not, it's not that you need to stop doing what you're doing. It's that you need to just focus on Jesus. If you just focus on Jesus and becoming like Jesus, 
you will naturally become an empowered entrepreneur, empowered by the Holy Spirit, not through your own efforts, but through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may inspire you then to go get your real estate license, to go get your C7, to go get your blah, blah, blah. But let the Holy Spirit inspire that, not your mom, your dad, the latest TikTok trend, or let the Holy Spirit inspire you to act and to move. And that only comes by strengthening that relationship with Christ. God first. Everything else follows. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So where can people find you um, for those who are listening? If, if uh, people just go to alexmiranda22.com, you can learn about my world. Um, and I say my world because I do a lot. I'm a multipreneur. I've got many businesses. Um, and that's, that's my calling. That's my art form. Like, it's, it's not normal. And it's not what most people do. But that's when you know you're in un your unique ability um, is, is when you can do something that is that not a lot of people can do. Um, so I've got I've got a, a, a Christian canvas motivational company called faithhustle.co. I teach all this stuff that we talked about. I teach it all on Godpreneur Academy so people can get a word there about how to do business God's way. Um, I got my blog, Daily Godpreneur. I have my branding agency. Um, I have a virtual assistant staffing agency. I mean, there's so much you can learn about me on alexmarana22.com. Um, you could take my devotionals on Uversion. You can buy a couple books on Amazon. So I'm there. Whatever, whatever part of, of business you want to you wanna, um, get uh, knowledge on, I, I probably have some kind of say in it, except for um, uh, investment and, and, and all that good stuff that, that, uh, you're probably involved in. <laughs> now I have one question I want to ask you, you know, you saying you, you imagine so many better. How do you stay focused on God and not get overwhelmed through this different businesses that you're managing? You just, uh, again, this is about efficiency, right? Just make sure that the first thing you do in the morning is read the word of God everything else will follow Monday through Friday. The first thing you should do is be in the word of God. If you just develop that habit, everything else will solve itself in your life. That's it. Had I not developed that habit back in 2014, you and I would not be on this podcast right now. That business wouldn't have been launched. Daily Godpreneur wouldn't exist. Godpreneur Academy wouldn't exist. None of that would exist. God first. That's it. That's it. That's it. I uh, hope those who are listening, thank you again, Alex. You, you know, it was definitely fun. I hope those who are listening, I hope you guys, like I say always, you know, take action. You know, this information is not for you just to hear, but take action and share this podcast with someone who can benefit and stay tuned for next week's episode. Thank you again, Alex.